YouTube, Andrew Darling here. Hey guys, this is going to be my full review of the iPhone 6. Um, I've had it in house here for a couple weeks now, getting close to a couple weeks. Um, it's basically going to be an Android user's perspective. I have utilized it, I've done everything I can with it. I will let you know the good, the bad, the positives, the ugly, the negatives, all of that good stuff. So I'm going to try and throw some stuff together. You guys let me know what you think at the end of the day. This is uh, Andrew Darling, and this is my iPhone 6 review. The Space Gray iPhone 6, although I wish it was black, is a very good device. The camera protrudes slightly from the back, but that should not be too much of an issue unless you're intentionally wobbling the device on a flat surface. The weight initially was kind of scary for the device in that it felt too light in my hand and almost delicate. Even with the headphone jack on the bottom, the rest of the buttons and the speaker placement are very solid. On the left side, you're going to have your volume rockers and your silence switch, which all give you very good feedback. And on the opposite side, you have your power button, just like any standard Apple device. The screen, for only being slightly more than 720p, is very strong and represents colors very well. The buttons feel good to include the home button, and even with those plastic antennas, the iPhone 6 still has a premium look and feel. I could not get over how much this device just fit in the hand wonderfully, and then when looking at it, it was a display that you definitely wanted to interact with. The iPhone 6 is a very premium device, and it is something that has not lost itself on me. I want to talk about some of the pros of the iPhone 6, and the first one, and my absolute favorite feature, is Touch ID. Being able to program multiple fingers to unlock a device, and to unlock a device in general, has been my favorite way to interact with the lock screen on any, on any operating system, period. Using Touch ID is the coolest, and to what I know, most secure way to get into a lock screen, um, while maintaining having a lock screen that not really anybody else can get into other than if they know the pin. I love Touch ID. It's probably my favorite feature from this phone. And as you guys know, I'm not a huge iOS fan. Um, there's reasons for that that I'm going to talk about in a second. But the Touch ID is, is brilliant. The way it's implemented, it completely blows the, uh, the, the Galaxy S5 swipe down thing. to it's, That's ridiculous. Touch ID is amazing, and it is exactly what some sort of biometrics for a smartphone should be. The front-facing camera is also very solid. Um, it takes some really great pictures. Um, I'm going to just say I have a big head here, and yeah, there's a filter on it. But the first picture I took and posted to my Instagram, um, I just thought was a wonderful picture. Um, it was clear. It was concise. It adjusted to the light very well. And the front-facing camera on the iPhone 6 is definitely something that it just it worked well for me now the panorama mode when you actually go into the camera and you go to the panoramic mode it, it's implemented way better than the panoramic mode is in Android and coming from an Android phone for the last six years however long Android's been out now um, the panorama mode in the iPhone was much easier to use much more efficient and actually uh, produced a more consistent picture all the way across uh, with lighting whereas I've taken panoramas before uh, with an Android phone and the lighting just wasn't quite right from one side of the photo to the other. The double tap feature, uh, now this is something that um, when you're in an app, say you're in Instagram and you want to go back, that's one thing I do not like about iOS is the back button being way up there, but say you're here and you want to go back, you double tap the home button and it comes down so you can tap over here. Generally that's going to be for one handed use um, and the, the reason that is is because now that we're above a four inch phone some folks might not be able to uh, reach all the way across with their thumb. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, having that ability, and you can actually do it here on the uh, home screen as well to bring the apps down. I think that's a very cool software tweak. I think it's something that's it's non-invasive. You don't accidentally do it most of the time. Um, I have, can't say I've ever accidentally double tapped. Um, now, if there was a way to utilize the track or the touch ID pad or the home button if there was a way to utilize that to move uh, in between individual letters in text that would be phenomenal overall the panorama mode is very good Google integration is sufficient um, I'm gonna show you real quick what the Google now looks like um, 
in iOS, and this is something that I was able to use uh, a little bit. It's not as uh, smooth as it is in Android, but that's simply because Google produces Android. I mean, Android is, is Google uh, personified. So I'm going to show you guys real quick how the experience I had with it in Google Now. And it's very simple, uh, very easy to use. But overall, the Touch ID, phenomenal. The front-facing cameras, phenomenal. The integration with Apple products, of course, that's awesome. I've been able to utilize, uh, see some of that utilization, utilizing uh, friend stuff and watching how they interact with their Apple devices. I don't have a whole lot of other Apple devices, so it doesn't work well for me. But having the parenting stuff on there as well is something that's very interesting. I've been able to see uh, how it works with uh, with Apple TV and with AirPlay and stuff like that, and that's all pretty cool. Google integration is sufficient uh, for what most people will do if you're like me and you just absolutely need Google Apps. It's sufficient. It's not ideal, but it is sufficient. Panorama mode is good. The color reproduction on photos and just the uh, the screen itself is very good, and the double tap feature is pretty cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and talk about Google Now, and then we'll go over and we'll talk about some of the layout issues between Facebook and Twitter that I really like on iOS versus Android. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and get into that, and then we'll get into the cons. Again, using Touch ID, you go ahead and unlock the device, and then I just swiped over to my Google Search app. Now, unlike an Android, where the first thing that comes up is the search bar and your cards, and here, once the cards actually load and become refreshed, then they will show up at the bottom. You have to actually swipe up on the cards like so in order to get them to show up. Now they do all still show up just like they do in Android and you can still swipe them side to side in order to remove them from the screen. The Google search app is still pretty solid even in iOS and it does have some pretty cool features just like the Android version does. Alright guys, one thing I do like about iOS is I like where um, the Facebook and Twitter apps where they so this is a one plus one this is a, obviously the iPhone 6 as you can tell oh beautiful baby up there but as you can tell all the buttons are down here at the bottom for your uh, your news feed friend requests all that stuff news feed friend request um, that's all down there at the bottom whereas in Android everything is up top now granted you can swipe in Android you can swipe back and forth uh, to do the stuff at the top uh, but and that was obviously to check in there. But uh, I just, I, I like at the bottom. I like how everything is at the bottom. It's just much easier that way, much simpler. Um, and then also it's the same way, and I'm switching over to the Twitter apps in iOS and Android. And with Android having the larger phones, having everything up top versus having everything down here on the bottom like iOS, um, to me doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, I like everything being there at the bottom. Um, whereas it's, everything is up top here on Android. So that's just a little personal preference for me uh, as far as just how uh, the apps uh, interact and, and differ a little bit. As everybody's talked about, iOS 8 definitely has some bugs. Um, there's quite a few of them in there. There's been some forced closes in the Google Plus app. Uh, there's also some text rendering uh, in the browser. Like, for example, if you go into your Gmail and you pick something like I'm doing my giveaway now, um, and I go in here and say I want to reply. Okay, it'll push me to the YouTube app, which is fine, but there's like three or four different places to actually sign in. So there's a YouTube app. But when you go in to actually um, respond to stuff or just even in text rendering, if you have a link, if you get a link from, say, a text message or something like that, and it pulls you over to Safari or the stock browser. Um, sometimes the text, zooming in or out, landscape, portrait, doesn't matter. It's not going to all show up for you. Um, it's quite a few different things. Now, one thing I am uh, rather impressed with uh, is the uh, stock keyboard. So let me just open up a new uh, thing here. So the stock keyboard um, on iOS has notoriously been pretty solid. Um, that continues to be the case here, um, my experience. Uh, very easy to type on, very solid, uh, really good emoji support, which may or may not be interesting to you. Uh, now, as far as using SwiftKey, um, I have SwiftKey downloaded, and you can use it. Um, it works relatively well. Uh, the only problem that I've had uh, is not so much with SwiftKey. It's with inconsistency. There's been inconsistency depending on if I open up a messaging app, if I go to a browser, if I type in a password, if you get to a password um, bar in the browser, 
every single time I've had to push back to the stock uh, keyboard, which is fine. I don't know if that's something intentional uh, to do related to just security purposes or whatever, but that's just something that I've found kind of kind of aggravating, kind of annoying. Um, I will say this though: one thing that I have been just blown away by is iMovie. Um, I took a couple pictures, a video, um, did a couple different things in iMovie on the iPhone and got what I thought were pretty pretty solid results. So iMovie is definitely cool. Um, I've grouped everything kind of goofy on here, but the way that I group them on here, it, it really almost makes it so I don't go use certain apps. Um, I'll show here in the video in a second. The Google uh, search support is pretty solid. I mean, it's pretty easy to use. Uh, but I have your main social media stuff down here and then the stuff to chat with. I wish chat heads were available. I really missed that from Android. The actual chat head going up there, it's one of the only great things I think Facebook has contributed to uh, Iowa, or I'm sorry, to Android. Uh, but overall, the software's been pretty buggy. It's not what I expected from an Apple device um, who's. Uh, long lineage is uh, you know bragging about software and whatnot overall it's pretty smooth I also played asphalt on um, zero pretty cool or is it asphalt 8 asphalt O? I don't know what it is but I played that for a little bit gameplay was very smooth phone didn't get very hot so overall the uh, software is kind of buggy it's not too terrible um, it's just not what I expected from an Apple product especially somebody who knows plenty of folks who use Apple products all the time and that's the one thing that they talk about is fluidity, integration, and all that cool stuff. Earlier I talked about the front-facing camera and it being exceptional. Uh, the rear shooter here on the iPhone 6 is not an exception to that rule. Uh, for only being 8 megapixels, uh, it clearly shows that there's a lot more going on in a phone and how it renders pictures than just the megapixel count. While to me it wasn't a pro or a con, the rear shooter itself uh, was a push in that for me, it was uh, similar to the likes of the Galaxy S5 um, and the OnePlus One, uh, which have been two of the, the best phone cameras that I've used um, on a device. I do have a separate video that I plan on doing that's going to compare um, the cameras on the Galaxy S5 and the iPhone 6, so stay tuned for that. But the rear camera, uh, for me, it, it was... A very good camera, very, very solid camera, one of the top two or three best smartphone cameras that I've, I've ever used. But at this point, it feels like everybody else is caught up and Apple is not ahead of the pack anymore when it comes to smartphone cameras and smartphone photography. The one thing that I miss the absolute most from Android in the time that I've been using the iPhone is notifications. Notifications on iOS, there's no other way to put it, they're terrible. You can get them, they show up on your lock screen, and unless you swipe that specific notification, nothing else goes away. So for example, I've been in the Instagram app, okay? I recently posted a photo to Instagram about the video that I'm creating right now. Recently posted this, posted this photo. Um, it just has some of the pictures that I'm working on. Obviously, it's not going to show, but some of the ones that you probably already saw earlier in this video. But going in here, I've already seen all the notifications. However, going here into notifications, you have GroupMe, Instagram, Google+, Twitter, and the Google Now app. I have to manually go in and delete these. That's terrible. For what? Once I go in and look at the notification in Instagram or Google+, or GroupMe, for example, or if I do it on another device, it should go away. It does on Android. It doesn't on iOS, and that's something that really does bother me. The only good thing to the notification screen and the way and the style of notifications, and I just got an email, somebody else subscribed to this channel, so go do that right now, subscribe to this channel. But the only good thing is the actual today thing, the, the today marker. So this is really good to get a quick glance of what you're looking at weather-wise for the day, um, and then it goes through your calendar, and then it tells you what you have tomorrow going on. So that's very solid, that's very enjoyable, that's very useful. Otherwise, notifications are just simply terrible. Um, they're, they're not good at all. Um, oh, the today portion is pretty good. Um, another thing that I don't like is the text messaging app. The settings, I mean, you have to go in the settings themselves to go down to messaging, and you have to pull to the side for your text messages. Um, like, for example, uh, I had a 
conference earlier, uh, in Uber conference is what it's called, and you have to like pull here and slide for your time to come up. If you can tell over there on the side, you can see where the time is actually showing up now, um, right there. But once you let go of it, it goes back away. I mean, just little things like that I don't like at all. I just rather have the time be there the whole um, time. And the back button location is something that bugs the heck out of me. And it always has an iOS. Okay, if I go into settings, for example, um, I go into settings, I go to general, I go to about. Okay, that's great and all, but why is the back button way up there? Every single time, why is it up there? That I mean, I understand there's a consistency, there's a fluidity to it, but to reach that far with my thumb is aggravating. That is where the double tap comes in handy, if I can do it. But at the same time, on a four inch phone, on a three and a half inch phone, it made sense to have the back button there. As, you, as Apple starts to produce larger phones and catch up with the rest of the manufacturing world when it comes to smartphones, that is going to cause issues for folks. I understand that's why they put in this uh, drop down thing with the double tap on the Touch ID button, but that's just another thing that I, I really don't like. And the last thing I want to talk about that I cannot stand is battery life. There is no sort of consistency at all. There's no sort of way, and even if you go into settings and you go to your usage time and all the other stuff, there's no good way to, to, to really figure out what the heck is going on. Um, you can go into your uh, display and brightness and leave it on auto settings, which is exactly what I do. Um, but to go in and figure out what it is that's using the battery, the, the apps are listed here. Let me go in there and show you. The apps are listed, but it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's, it's, not, it's not very useful at all. Um, and just talking about usage, here we go. So you go in and go to battery usage. Okay, usage I have right now six hours of usage and nine hours of standby. Um, this thing hadn't been off the phone, buffalo, off the charger, Buffalo's nine hours, and I'm at 20%. Oh, Google Plus is using 21%. I mean, that it does not, uh, it's not clear where that's one thing I love about Android, you get screen on time, you get to see if there's any rogue apps that are keeping it awake. I, I do not like the battery life because it's not consistent and it doesn't tell me why it's not consistent. It doesn't give me a good uh, ability to go through and force close and delete and figure out what it is that's chewing my battery. Um, the battery life on the iPhone 6, I mean, it's been... For me, it's been no better than the Galaxy S5. Um, it's actually been a little bit worse than the Galaxy S5, and I didn't have the greatest battery life on the Galaxy S5. So I do have a lot of accounts, uh, but those are pretty much the cons. Uh, overall, notification center is terrible. The text messaging app, there's not enough customization, and I know there's third-party ones out there that you can use. Um, the iOS back button is it's poorly placed as phones get larger. It's very poorly placed as phones get larger. The... Uh, Battery issues, it, I don't know what the heck it's doing. It, is it draining? Is it not draining? Is it screen brightness? It can't because it's auto brightness. Um, am I using something? Am I getting too many notifications? There, there's not really a way to tell. So those are a lot of the cons. And last thing I'm going to do before I wrap up, um, I want to talk about a couple more things uh, before I get out of here and finish my review. And my favorite thing about iTunes or the App Store is bundled apps. This isn't specific to necessarily the iPhone 6. It's more of an app store thing. Bundled apps are great. They're a great way for a developer to generate some more revenue and to get some less popular apps out there. Um, for example, with uh, Runtastic, as you guys know, I did a review um, of their uh, Push-Ups Pro, Sit-Ups Pro, Squats Pro, and all that cool stuff. Um, I did a review of that uh, not too long ago. But as you can tell here, these are all... Um, Runtastic apps. So, including the uh, the heart rate monitor, and then all these guys right here are all Runtastic apps. So I have all of them, and I think they cost me like 13 bucks total, which would have normally been something like 20 bucks, 21 bucks, something like that. But bundled apps is great. It's a great way to get users to purchase more apps, and it's something that I really think Android should do more of. So. 
All the one, the other part that did that was kind of cool is per, iTunes Music. I haven't purchased anything from iTunes in a few years, probably more than a couple. Um, but Lil Wayne's the Carter Four album, and then an old um, uh, Young Jeezy album and an old Kanye West album showed up in iTunes as well as U2. But hey, everybody loves Bono, right? But uh, no, they uh, they showed up there, so that was a little bit different. Uh, overall, I hadn't had too much of an issue with it getting a surprise of having your old music on there um, and a satisfactory speaker we're, we're pretty cool so before I wrap it up what do you guys think about the camera what do you guys think about um, notification center what do you guys think about some of the stuff I've just discussed let me know in the comments below and here are my final thoughts my final thoughts on the iPhone 6 are it is a very very good phone it is a top of the line phone. It is a premium phone. Okay. Don't ever mistake that because the specs aren't what our favorite Android phone is, that it isn't a capable and worthy phone. It absolutely is. And the uh, software optimization for the hardware is probably what makes that interaction so smooth. For me, I'm not keeping it. It's not going to work for me. Um, it doesn't. It. It doesn't do everything that Android does, and Android does everything that iOS does, and then some. So while I'm going to miss the Touch ID, I am going to go ahead and, uh, and send it back. The experience that I've had with it has been remarkably refreshing, and I'm glad I definitely took the time and spent a little bit of money um, to spend some time with the device. The move from Android to iOS uh, was rough at first. Uh, after getting used to it, it wasn't too terrible, but it's just not something I'm going to enjoy or use for the long term. So I'm going to go back to Android. Uh, most likely on a uh, OnePlus until my giveaway is up. But uh, overall, like I said, the phone is not terrible at all. Um, and there's going to be lots of folks out there who are very happy with it. For me, uh, it's it's much more uh, flash than substance in that it's Apple, it's the mystique, it's the prestige, and all that stuff that comes with Apple. For me, it, it's much more uh, a spark than substance. Um, while I did enjoy... Uh, some of it, the build quality is great. The feel in the hand is phenomenal. I love the size of the phone. I really don't have any issues with that at all. Um, the protruding camera didn't bother me, even in the slightest. Uh, the pros, of course, the overall feel, the Touch ID, front-facing camera was great. Google integration sufficient. Panoramic mode in the camera is pretty awesome. Um, color reproduction, the double tap feature to uh, bring the, uh, or just to double tap to bring everything down. Very cool, very useful. Um, some of the cons were notifications are terrible. Coming from Android, that's not something that that I'm used to having to deal with is frustrating notifications. Android's notifications are implemented as well as I believe they can be implemented, and I'm very proud of that. So software, of course, there's a couple bugs in iOS 8. Um, iMovie was fantastic. I'd never worked with it before as I don't own uh, an Apple PC, but... I enjoyed it uh, working with iMovie, and that's something that really makes you think about if I didn't already have a Surface Pro 3, I'd get an iPad, but it's really a waste of money at this point. Um, again, bundling apps, which is not an iPhone 6 thing, it's more of a, an Apple I, uh, App Store thing. That's genius. That's great. I like that. Um, the phone is very solid. Um, for your money, there are better phones out there. If you're already entrenched in Apple's ecosystem and you're already uh, an iPhone fan and you really do enjoy it, it's it's going to be better than your 5S. It, it is. Uh, if you want to get the 6 Plus, more power to you. That is a huge phone. Um, it's bigger than the One Plus, and I think the One Plus is the One Plus One is too big to be honest with you. But uh, overall, I was I was refreshed. We'll say after this uh, couple weeks with iOS, uh, I definitely. Uh, learned a few things. I have a deeper appreciation and understanding for why individuals like iOS and why they use it to integrate their um, homes with their Macs and their you know iPads and all that other stuff. For me, for somebody who doesn't use a lot of Apple products um, and somebody who's very, very preferable to Android, just having been on it since November 2008, um, I'm going back home. Back home is to Android. Um, that's what I enjoy. That's what I'm going to use. So like and subscribe. This video went a lot longer than I wanted it to, but I was able to get in all the points uh, from my experience. I appreciate it. This is probably going to be my longest video on YouTube, and hopefully I don't have any that go longer than this. But the Apple iPhone 6 is a very good device. It is definitely worth your money. 
Um, if you're going to be one of those folks who uh, has ever liked Apple, has ever had Apple, it is worth your money. It is a great device. The problem is it's not for me. So I appreciate you too. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I still have my giveaway going on. Um, that's going on for another couple weeks. Uh, those of you at the uh, Android Barbecue, I will see you guys then um, in a couple weeks. Thank you guys so much. Like and subscribe. Again, it's been Andrew Darling. Thank you, YouTube. We'll talk to you soon.